Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Even if you don't have a lot of interest in vintage computers, I think this is gonna be kind of a fun diagnostic challenge. You see, I have this motherboard here that is called an eight megahertz turbo, uh, but unfortunately it appears to be running at 4.77 megahertz. Now, um, just very quick background. For those of you that don't know, most of the IBM XT motherboards ran at 4.77 megahertz, the same speed as the original IBM PC, but then they started coming out with some turbo ones. Um, and usually there was some kind of button on the front of the case that you'd push to get the thing in turbo. Um, but this thing does not have a manual. And so I've been fiddling around with it, trying to get it to run eight megahertz and haven't been able to. So I kind of want to take you through what I'm doing. So when I go in to check it and run the diagnostic, it's really clear that the computer actually is running at 4.77 megahertz. Now again, I've heard that there are things like key combinations and stuff like that that you can do uh, to speed the computer up, but I don't ever see any results. And every single time I try a key combination, I have to fire this thing up and run the benchmark. So I thought to myself, there has to be a better way to diagnose this thing. And then I realized two things. One, I have an oscilloscope and two, I've got a sponsor, PCBWay.com, and you can go on there and you can get five boards for $5. And so I went on and I found a community project called the PCXT Protoboard. And there's all kinds of projects that are like just pre-designed for you and you can just add them to your cart. And that's exactly what I did. And if you look at this thing right there, it says CLK, which means that this card can interact with the clock signal on the motherboard and the clock signal is the thing I'm trying to figure out. So let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the extent of the soldering I had to do. I simply added a wire onto the end of this so I can attach my oscilloscope. Now, of course, I could have tried to jam the probe down in here, but the thing is I'm going to need to be doing this for maybe an hour. I need to be able to, uh, do key combinations and reboot and type things and see what has an effect on the actual clock signal. So therefore, I want to have a good connection to my scope that I don't have to fiddle with. Let me show you my setup. So what this allows me to do is to put the card in the slot and interface with the clock signal directly on my oscilloscope and have a nice, easy connection that I don't have to fiddle around with so that I can do all kinds of other things like switch jumpers and do key combinations and run software. So I'm going to fire up the computer and I'm going to hit the run button on the scope and you will see down here that we are running at, as I expected, 4.77 megahertz. Okay, so I have spent a lot of time on forums and on Facebook groups and stuff like that. And I've tried a lot of different combinations, control alternate minus, control alternate plus, control alternate page up, control alternate home, just all sorts of different combinations. And it turns out that a couple things were going on. One, uh, the computer does not beep when it goes into turbo mode, so I don't have any clue there. Uh, secondly, this key over here, these two keys were not working on this keyboard. And uh, so that wasn't very helpful, but it turns out that with a working minus key, if I do control alternate this minus, nothing happens, but control alternate this minus, as you can see, we go up to eight megahertz. And so that was the trick that I needed. Now, the problem is that every single time I restart the computer, uh, it is in 4.77 megahertz and beyond that, I have no way to tell, there's no LEDs or anything like that on this motherboard to tell that I'm actually in the higher speed. So we're gonna solve that problem next. I planned on flashing some BIOS chips that would allow me to have better options to manage the speed on this computer, but each one seemed to come with its own problems. So I decided it was time to stop tinkering and to actually put this computer together. I cleaned up this original IBM XT case and put in the motherboard. I had plenty of those original 1980s screws and it only takes two of them to hold the board in. If you've never seen these AT style power connectors before, you have to be careful because you can reverse them. My original IBM PC has CGA graphics and I have a lot of computers with VGA graphics, but I don't own an EGA machine. So I decided to use this Genoa Super EGA card to have all the bases covered. 
I have two five and a quarter inch double density floppy drives in the case that had these old Wang computer disks in them. I have no idea what they were for. I found an original floppy controller for the machine that needs a special floppy cable with edge connectors on all three positions. Notice that the connectors are keyed so you can't put them in backwards. I also found this cool original IBM XT speaker that has this little holder that attaches it to the case and it's keyed so that you can't plug it in backwards. Finally, after some extensive probing, I found that two of the pins on this four pin connector act like a turbo light to tell me when the computer is operating at full speed. The light is off when it's running at 4.77 megahertz and on when it runs at eight. So I know the title might seem like clickbait, but thanks to this card and PCBWay.com, I had the tools I needed to diagnose what was wrong with this keyboard and the motherboard and get this computer running 66% faster. If you're interested in these cards for prototyping or diagnostics, I'll have a link in the description. I have more work to do on this thing, but that's a project for another video. So thanks for watching and have a great day.